it's you're just funny. It's, it's you funny know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Come here, come here, though. Yeah, he's crazy, see? Who are you? Friends, family, hey, what's going on? How is everybody? Um, happy day to each of you. Thanks uh, again for tuning in to another episode of the Barardo Podcast. I am your host, Tony Barardo. If this is your first time, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we talk about health, wellness, social interaction. I'll interview you know, experts from various fields um, that I'm passionate about and that I want to learn more about. But also, too, it's a more often than not, it's a few episodes of me ranting. So <laughs> this is one of those episodes. So uh, welcome. Um, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, especially with everything that's going on in the world, man, it is, it's almost like once you, once you get past one thing, right, whether it's the pandemic or a mass shooting or politics or some guy cutting you off, like once you think you get past problems and you think they just go away. Things seem to be like getting worse. And I, I don't know if it's any uh, person's fault in particular. Like, you know, it's easy for us to blame the president and the economy and yada, 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 yada. But I just think us as humans were maybe we're just more stressed. You know, maybe we just uh, we have a lot going on and it's affecting us in a negative way, like mentally. Our mental health is shot to shit. And, um, you know, it's making us act in, um, in ways that are obviously not beneficial to our health, but also not benefit or not beneficial rather to other people's health. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with what we do on a daily basis. So I wanted to kind of go over a few things. I wanted to go over an article that I found that is uh, rightfully labeled uh, five side effects of working too much. So I thought that would be uh, super interesting to kind of go over and talk about, but also, I think it'll kind of help us a little bit because, you know, you forget that what you do on a daily basis is you wake up and more often than not, you go to work or you work and that's eight hours of your day. So eight hours of your day plus the eight hours of sleep you're getting, that's 16 hours right there. That's more than half of your day gone. So what you do in those hours and eight of those you're sleeping. So what you do in the majority of your day, which is working um, is very important uh, to your mental health and to the people around you. So I wanted to kind of go over this because I think we do work too much. And I think we're working so much now and there's so much pressure because there's a lot of cool stuff out there that we want to buy all the new shit. So we're working a little bit harder to get the new shit. And we're ignoring a lot of other things that maybe we should be paying attention to. So it's stressing us out and stress makes you do wicked things. So if you could figure out how not to be stressed, I think as a whole, your life is going to be better. So I wanted to kind of go through this article, touch base, add my two cents as per usual. Uh, but before I do, listen, there, there's nothing more important than, than your mental health and your actual overall health. And an easy way to really get your, your health back on track is supplementation. You know, I'm a big believer in supplements, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to take supplements because, you know, let's be honest, the food that we're intaking now is just not as good as it, what it was 100 years ago. So we have to supplement to get all the right nutrients that our body needs and thrives to be better and stronger. And I'm always a big believer in you want to prepare for the worst, right? So how do you do that is you take supplements, you work out, you be stronger because I don't know when there's going to be an apocalypse. I don't know when I have to outrun a tiger, but I want to be prepared, right? And uh, perfect keto gives you everything that you need, not necessarily to outrun a tiger, right? I think you're fucked either way, but uh, they give you plenty of supplements uh, like collagen, electrolytes, super greens, which is one of my favorite that gives you up to 26 nutrients that your body needs, fruits and veggies uh, in one little scoop. So I take that and I throw that in my smoothie every single day. Uh, after a workout, or if you just want to mix it with water, it tastes actually really good. So they have all types of great products. Uh, you could visit them at perfectketo.com. And if you want 20% off, use the code TheBerardo. They're going to take care of you. So thank you, Perfect Keto, for allowing us to uh, get strong to outrun tigers. Uh, but perfectketo.com, check that out, guys. And uh, I also do want to thank uh, Rainforce Pulse. 
You know, if you follow me on IG, you know that I've been obsessed with Rainforest Bulls for a long time. Uh, not only do they have just really great products, but the company's goal is to promote sustainability. And uh, they do that by reclaiming reusable materials like coconut shells and wood cutoffs, uh, which in most cases, believe it or not, are actually wasted. So what Rainforest Bulls does, they actually use all those extra coconut shells and wood cutoffs, and they uh, turn them into a food safe kitchenware that looks really, really cool. And it's eco-friendly. Um, you know, these purchases are just, you know, a way to look cool in the kitchen, even though that does help, but it all, all goes to a good cause. So every single purchase that you uh, do at rainforestbowls.com, um, it's going to help the Vietnamese communities by working with trees for the future. They actually plant one tree for every product sold on their website at rainforestbowls.com. Year to date, they planted over 10,000 trees. You could visit rainforestbowls.com to find out all the details and all the good stuff they do. And of course, anything on the website, if you want to pick it up, uh, use the code the Berardo, you'll get 20% off your entire purchase. Again, it's all going to good cause and the stuff looks really, really dope. So check that out, rainforestbowls.com. Uh, without further ado, let's get in to today's episode. Okie dokie, Artichokies. So um, this website, it's actually from uh, clevelandclinic.org. Uh, it's regarding a recent study. Uh, this was actually posted uh, back in October, but I just found the article, so I wanted to share with you guys. But there's a list of actually five side effects of working too much. Um, it reads, work-life balance. We hear that expression all the time. But many of us are actually guilty of working way too long and not focusing too much on our health. So how much work is too much work? A recent study by the World Health Organization at the International Labor Organization shows that working more than 55 hours per week can have negative side effects to your health. And for any of us that are good at math, that is 11 hours a day if you're working a five-day week. Uh, so what can you do to achieve a better work-life balance? Psychologists Adam Borland talks about the warning signs to look out for. Okay, so here's the five side effects that it talks about. So is working too much harmful? Let's cut to the chase, right? Uh, it reads here, in short, yes, it is harmful. While our traditional work week is about 40 hours per week, it's very unrealistic these days. Many of us have work weeks that go far beyond 40 hours. Reasons can include an overload of emails, having a tough time creating barriers while working remote, and being short-staffed at their business. It's really hard for people to turn it off, says this psychologist, uh, Dr. Borland. Okay, I'm going to leave the office and not think about it until I'm back tomorrow. But of course, as we know, according to the study, those 55 hours plus that they typically work a week has a huge strain on your mental health. Um, it can be attributed to coronary artery disease, which is a condition recurring in chest pain or discomfort and possibly strokes. Uh, side effects of working too much, it continues to say. There are plenty of other ways working too much can impact your health. If you're overworked, your cortisol level, which is the primary stress hormone, uh, increases, which can lead to brain fog, high blood pressure, and a host of other health problems. Uh, it gives the example of, it's like a car trying to run with every every limited amount of gas in the tank, says Dr. Barland. We're expecting ourselves to perform physically and cognitively on such a high level, but in reality, our reserves are all tapped out. Here are some common side effects of overworking, it says. You're not getting enough sleep. I'm guilty of that. I do not get enough sleep. And by the way, I should mention, some of you are probably listening to this be like snickering a little bit because I work so much myself, so this is very hypocritical. I will tell you though, the work that I do, um, I think we'll, we'll continue to read this and realize that it's not really stressful, right? Because, I mean, I do work a lot, and not only do I have a full-time job, but uh, the wife and I are actually doing our business meet cute box, so we do that on the side, and of course, I do this podcast. Uh, I even write uh, blogs for a couple companies on the side, so I do a lot of side work, but I'm very good at managing my time, so I think a lot of this has to do with being in a work environment, whether it's remote or not and you're stuck eight hours a day and you're committed to this job. So for me, when I turn off, quote unquote, 5 p.m., my full-time job, I turn that off where I'm a health and wellness consultant. So I'll turn that off at 5 p.m. And that right there, I'm done. I'm not answering emails, I'm turn off my notifications, like, and then I'll focus on either the podcast or meet cute box. So I'm good at 
kind of managing that. But I wasn't always good at it. Like through a lot of trial and error, I realized how to do this. So this is just a good article, I think, in general uh, for someone if you're not able to practice or you haven't practiced rather those steps. So let's go back to this. So uh, you're not getting enough sleep, right? That's number one. That could be a sign of you being overworked. Sleep improves physical and mental health. So missing out on these Z's can affect you to help cope with stress, solve problems, or even recover from an illness. Hmm, interesting. I think we all agree to, that, agree to that, right? Like every time you get sick, what's the one thing they say? Get rest. Well, if you're always getting rest, you're probably not going to get sick as much as someone who doesn't get rest. Another side effect, uh, you're not eating during the day. Interesting. Uh, if you're working too much, it's easy to become absorbed in a task and forget to eat throughout the day. Not eating and skipping meals can actually cause your blood sugar levels to drop, leading to low energy and even the chance you likely binge unhealthy foods late in the day. I think a lot of us have been there, right, where you're not eating maybe breakfast or, you know, maybe you skip a meal or something like that, and then your next meal is full of carbs, salt, sugars, and really shitty stuff because your body is craving that because it really hasn't had anything all day. So that's why it's very important if you do eat or if you're not eating a lot of meals, the meals that you do eat, just make sure they're healthy and uh, they can give you that sustainable energy throughout the day. Another one, another side effect, you're not exercising. Hmm. And this is actually on here. I'll leave the article in the description. I'm not like saying this because <laughs> if you heard my podcast, you know, I always preach about exercising and eating right. I swear it's on here. I'll leave the link to the article in the episode notes, but it does say here you're not exercising. And that could be a, a big side effect of um, you working too much. We all know exercising is important, but when you're overworked, that's likely one of the first things we stop doing is exercise. But some form of exercise, ideally you want to do about 150 minutes of moderate intensity uh, or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity each week. Each week. It's very realistic. 150 minutes a week? That's not bad. Anybody could do that. It's 30 minutes a day in a five-day work week. Um, exercising, it says here that it can prevent depression, lower your blood pressure, improve cholesterol, help control blood sugar, and reduce your risk of heart disease and diabetes. I think we all know that. We're not going to talk about that too much, even though I could talk about that all day. But you need to get out there, you need to get your steps, and you need to exercise. Uh, you're neglecting relationships is another one. If you're missing school plays or weekend activities because of work, you're missing out on crucial social time that can benefit you and your loved ones. Having those social connections helps with loneliness, but it also sharpens your memory and cognitive skills while increasing your sense of happiness and well-being. Also, don't leave those vacation days unused. People don't want to take vacation because they're so worried about wanting what happens when they get back, says the doctor here. Uh, weeks and months of vacation time are being left on the table. You need to use them. Man, oh man, when I had a job that gave me vacation days, whew, I was so pissed to take a vacation just because, you know, when you get back, it's always like more stressful somehow. But then you forget sometimes that it's just a job, right? Yeah, it pays the bills. Yeah, you want to do you want to do your best, but you got to take your vacation time because sometimes having that little break and having that vacation, you're going to come back more revitalized. It's going to help with cognitive function and all the things that it says here. So be sure to take those damn vacations. Um, you're turning to drugs and alcohol. Hmm. It's not uncommon for people to turn to substances when they feel overwhelmed or if they feel they just need to disconnect from work. I think we all could relate alcohol in particular. Ooh, nothing better than a nice glass of wine if you're stressed out, right? Or beer. Um, but there's so many side effects of drinking alcohol that it's going to long term, obviously not be good for you. But studies are actually showing because it is a poison, and because drinking alcohol just affects you on so many different lo levels, like a cellular level, your liver, your immune system, it just, it's a poison. It's a poison. That's why you feel like shit the next day. It's because your body's trying to fight that off. So imagine you're depressed, you're irritated at work, and then you turn to alcohol or drugs. Well, now the next day you wake up, you're feeling more shitty, you're feeling more irritated, more stressed out. So what do you try to do? You try to crank out some caffeine to get you where you need to be, right? Well, now you're cranking that caffeine, then you're going to crash. Now you're going to feel stressed and tired. So it's just a, it's a horrible, vicious cycle. So definitely drugs and alcohol are not the answer. 
substance abuse can actually lead to the decrease in productivity and increase in physical injuries while you're actually at work and affects your ability to concentrate and focus. Real quick, we're going to shoot over to thank our sponsor for today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Meet Cute Box. Meet Cute Box creates monthly themed date night boxes. Each box is handmade with care based on your membership profile with up to four items plus a love inspired date night. What I love about Meet Cute Box is that inside every box, there are unique items gathered from local businesses around the world and packed together with a new theme every month, giving you a new surprise to enjoy. Memberships start at only $29.99 per month with each box valued up to $100. To join today, visit meetcutebox.com. That's meetcutebox.com to receive a handmade box as early as next week. Meet Cute Box, the membership crate for you and your partner. Here's some signs of unhealthy work-life balance. Uh, it states here, sure, there are times when work can be stressful, like trying to make a big deadline. But if you're working more than 55 hours a week, it has become the norm nowadays. You might be suffering from a burnout and you don't even know it. Here are some signs that you might have an unhealthy work-life balance. Listen up, folks. Number one, stop taking care of yourself. You stop taking care of yourself. You stop going to the gym. You stop working out. You stop going for walks. Number two, you're not focused on your mental health. Pretty self-explanatory. Number three, your work no longer feels meaningful. <sighs> some of you, that's hitting hard, right? So you don't like what you do. It's not, you're not getting impacted that on a daily basis. You're not being challenged, maybe. Number four, you're consistently worried about your job performance. Number five, you have trouble establishing boundaries between home and work. Number six, you're lonely. Hmm, are you lonely? You could have an unhealthy work-life balance. How to manage work stress, right? This is all, what are the answers? How do we manage it? Well, it can be very difficult to stop working if you're staring down the laundry list of to-do items, but having a better work-life balance will make you not only more productive, but healthier overall. Here are some very small but useful ways that you can ease work stress. Number one, establish some boundaries. Set expectations for yourself. Determine what you're going to do today and uh, what time you want to be finished by. Then put it down or leave it at that time, regardless of where you're at in the project. Have some boundaries. Number two, set a routine. Plan something you look forward to after work, like an exercise class or reading a book, maybe some yoga. I love routines. I did a whole podcast on this a few weeks ago, but routines are the best. What's interesting about a routine is once you get in the routine, even if you don't like the routine, it's like you want to do it. Like subconsciously, your brain is just stronger than your body and it, it helps you fight through that. I don't know what I would do without a routine. You know, I, I feel like shit if I don't follow through with my routine. So definitely get some routines. All right, number three, let go of the guilt. Clocking out when everyone else is still at the office or online, don't feel bad about it, this doctor says. There tends to be feelings of a lot of guilt that people have. Remember, in order to be the best husband or wife, parent or child, sister or brother, you need to take care of yourself first. I tell this to, uh, to Brenda all the time. For whatever reason, society as a whole has really tied us down and told us that we need to do X, Y, Z all the time and we need to do certain things, but you need to focus on yourself first because then you can't help anybody. You know, they always tell you if the plane goes down, what do you have to do? Put on your mask first. You got to take care of yourself first before you can take care of anybody else. So I hope this was useful, folks. Um, you know, one of my favorite topics here is mental health, physical health. And, you know, this kind of checks all the boxes, right? Like if you don't have a good work-life balance, you're not going to have good mental or physical health, which is going to lead to numerous other problems, uh, not just that day, that week, that month, but for years and years to come. So have a good work-life balance. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Thanks for listening to the show. We will see you next time. Peace.